Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of my Bloodborne Effective run. Today we're going to go to college, uh, specifically Bergenworth College, and, um, and learn a lot there. Now, uh, Bergenworth, um, I think, was an area that was a casualty of running out of time. There's a lot of hints in the area that there was supposed to be a lot more to do in Bergenworth. And, um... Instead, we got a very short level. I think you'll notice how short this video is. Uh, uh, with some enemies that are are probably tougher than most people would be leveled for. And so, as a result, um, instead of fighting the Garden of Eyes that you did, for instance, uh, a lot of people will just sprint through the area. Which is, is very easy and quick to do, and, and quite frankly, after your first playthrough, that's probably what you'll do as well. You'll just run around the building and unlock the shortcut. Um, that being said, there are some interesting things to actually look at here. So, for instance, uh, this is the only place where we would fight the Garden of Eyes. And uh, I think it is implied that these guys are uh, former students of Bergenworth. I believe they are are wearing uh, some... Well, you can't really tell if it's academic clothing or not, but I think it's implied that they are the mutated students uh, from here that uh, took the uh, idea of Bergenworth a little too far. Um, they're not really as old blood initiated as more as they are understanding of the Deep Ones too well and transforming because of it. Uh... They uh, do have a very threatening attack in that it can um, frenzy you, which will take off, I think we've discussed it before, 70% of your health when it triggers. So you need to make sure you have a high chunk of health before that goes all the way through. And if you're not spending your insight kind of like I'm not, um, it's uh, being frenzied is, is quite a threat. Uh, having more insight lowers your, your meter uh, to uh, take frenzy damage before it actually kicks. So, um, and then we do have one of these brain suckers. Unfortunately, I do not get the uh, fight right here, but we do get to see uh, what their attack is and what their effect on it is. They get out their brain sucking tool, suck your brain out. Uh, and how this affects is it takes a good chunk of your HP, like any grab attack would. And uh, it removes an insight point. All of those spells that they have are designed to get the player uh, trapped. So that they can't move. And then it allows them to grab you and suck your brains out again. And somehow I get lucky here and they stop paying attention to me while I'm on the other side of the tree. Another enemy we have coming up soon is the... What is it called? Uh, it's not... Celestial centipede. Uh, oh, there you go. Fluorescent flower. Now, um, what's really weird about this enemy, and uh, for whatever reason, it just didn't work for me. I was under the impression that their their upper hitbox was much more vulnerable, like incredibly vulnerable, like one shot vulnerable. But um, I end up showing off here that it is not. Maybe if you're using Simon's bow blade, it is. But um, the, and apparently they are poisonable. But um, you'll see it in the distance making its way over here. Um, it is actually an illusion created by a small flower. Uh, the, I think the flower might be alive. And, it, well, of course it's probably alive. But it, it is not your tradition. It is much more of a Venus flytrap situation than it is a uh, traditional flower situation that it, uh, uh, it forms a growth at its base towards its root, but that growth is actually an illusion, uh, but a physical manifestation of this illusion, and i.e. it's able to summon uh, cosmos attacks to you, um, but highly susceptible to being damaged at top. You can you know, charge in and fight it in its body. Um, it's actually a lot easier than you think it would be, but I was trying to show off that it was weak in the uh, in the flower bit itself, and two throwing knives to poison is pretty 
nothing to scoff at. So definitely, its resistances are not as strong when you um, hit it directly on there. And uh, away it goes. I think we get a chance to see it despawn here. Now, a lot of people actually use the fluorescent flower as a means to um, just get into the boss fight uh, without doing the rest of Bergenworth. Not that there's much to it, but it's 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 a speedrunning strat. Um, unless you are speedrunning, I it's really hard to do. It involves a lot of save quitting, and it's really not worth the payoff. And. Uh, these guys kind of break my rule as being the basic enemy around here. Instead of taking two hits from the R1-L1 combo, they take three. But I think the reason that they've made them this strong is just because of how short the level is. So at this point, we pretty much you know, uh, cleared Outer Bergenworth. Uh, <laughs> not, much, not much to it. This is the only shortcut. Uh, there's a couple things to kill inside. Uh, one is a, a hunter that is a permadeath. So once you defeat this hunter, they're gone. And then the other, there is one more um, Garden of Eyes student. Uh, ironically, uh, there is another technical shortcut on the other side of the building, but we really don't understand what it's for. And this is kind of what I think was intended uh, when you first got here, is your path was going to be cut off and you're going to be forced to go in there and then go underground and then eventually come out the other side. Now, there is an underground entrance inside of the uh, college but it's inaccessible and we can't use it and no iteration of the game has really showed, off, showed that off. Uh, and there's the way you can open the door. I don't actually recommend opening the door. It gives you no benefit all you'd be doing is potentially, if you were to die in here, uh, invite guests to any you know to to the NPC fight. And this NPC is quite strong. It's um, effectively kind of like fighting Mikolash early. One thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and summon uh, this NPC and then let them fight while I go um, get the key for the door. Uh, unfortunately for me. The NPC doesn't really get any good work in. I was kind of hoping they would take off a, at least a small chunk of health while I was up here dealing with the other thing I wanted to do. But they appear to be using arcane attacks, judging by that noise, and not getting the job done. And here's our surprise Garden of Eyes issue. And they do, in fact, get me with the grab. And you can see that frenzy build up. And unfortunately, Mensis scholar Damien died. Now the Mensis crew is pretty into the arcane, so it's kind of not surprising that they lost to I forget this I forget this hunter's name. But she is a member of the choir, which is an extension or a graduation of the uh, Bergenworth uh, College group. Let's see if we can uh, find her name here. Uh, Yuri is apparently her name. She wields a threaded cane and a rosmarius, which is the basically like spray gun that's kind of like the flamethrower, except it shoots just arcane uh, dust at you. Uh, arcane spray? I'm not sure. So, it's a little bit more mysterious. And she can also cast this ability, which is a call beyond. Not something we have access to yet. Pretty cool spell, though. As you can see, she is quite strong, but she does flinch. Um, but so I really don't recommend giving her a lot of space. But unfortunately, you know, stamina, you do have to back off in situations. But if you're using the saw cleaver or the saw spear, you can just stagger her like crazy. And I got lucky that she did not uh, cast a call beyond again. Because NPC hunters have unlimited bullets. So, so if they want, they could totally spam that. Finally, we have pretty much cleared uh, Bergenworth. We've uh, fought in all the enemies and cleared it. It's relatively short, which is why I think they jam-packed it with, you know, the enemies that take harder hits and that hunter fight there. 
to give the area some more combative flavor, but there is a giant amount of lore just in this building and associated with it. Uh, basically, the counter college, or the counter to the healing church, and actually the birth of the healing church is related to Bergenworth. Here we've got Master Willem, somehow still alive, and you can kind of see at his neck there that he's growing some old one features. We can also um, kind of see that his feet have seen better days. But he's sort of transforming into an old one. Not really capable of talking anymore. So, um, there's that. And he tells us, hey, go into the lake if you want to understand the ultimate truths. This is much more of your Victorian thing here. Now he does actually have something we want, though. Especially for farming. So, this is the point. You know, once again, if you want to have a plus nine weapon before fighting Rom, you can equip the Irune and and go farm. But, you know, having a plus seven or plus eight weapon, especially for the strategy that I'm going to show off in the next episode, fighting Rom, is going to be plenty. Now, I do recommend, you know, if things go wrong, this is actually quite a tough fight with lots of enemies. A lot of people get stuck. Oh, here I am pointing out where they... Uh, speed run jump is and people just hop right over the fence and do the fight so you can avoid fighting yuri and um you can avoid you know basically avoid fighting yuri and needing that key but uh but that was my episode in bergenworth i hope you all enjoyed it and i hope you're staying safe have a wonderful day and thank you for watching